Let me fix this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Details, details, details. Praise God. So it's about the, about the uh, position that God has given us, righteousness, the righteousness that, that we are. But how, how wise of God to, to equip us even further, like righteousness isn't enough. Just pause on that, Trooper, just for a moment. Like righteousness isn't enough. It is enough. It is enough. But he, but he knows <laughs> that we needed a little help. We needed a little help. Jesus came in the form of a man. When he came to earth, he came like a man. Yeah. To live life as a man, to show man how to live life as a man connected to God. Yeah. Glory. Because that's, that's what Adam, to begin with, was created to be. A man living life connected to God. A man wholly dependent on God. Everything a man could need was given to Adam. And then I'm not going to I'm not going to repeat you know you know Adam's condition and how that happened but then Jesus comes. Jesus comes to restore back to put us back into the position that God had in his heart for us all along. And so Jesus then, we know a little review is he is baptized by the Holy Spirit. Where John declares out his mouth, he saw the Holy Spirit as a dove. Didn't say he was a dove, like a dove. Meaning he came from above, settled on Jesus. Then it says in the word that the Spirit led Jesus to the wilderness. This is a short review, but then last week we talked about Jesus went into the wilderness. He went into the wilderness being led by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Right? And then he encounters opportunities to sin. Yeah. That's what he encountered. He encountered sin personified. Yeah. The devil. Yeah. The devil started talking to him, just like he talked to Adam and Eve. Yeah. The devil's talking to Jesus while he's in the wilderness, while he is, I would say, physically weak and potentially emotionally weak. Yeah. Come on. Right? Yeah. He's alone in the wilderness. Ever felt like you're alone in the wilderness? Come on. He's hungry, and it doesn't necessarily always mean hungry for food, although when you're hungry for food, you can do a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah. I think we call it hangry around here. <laughs> a little private joke, but he didn't get it. It's okay. So there's appetites. Yeah. Ooh, I like it. There's appetites. So Jesus is hungry. He's hungry. Appetites can say, this has got to get better. <laughs> this has got to get better. That's an appetite. I'm hungry for it to get better. Jesus said, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you'll be filled. So he's endued with the Holy Ghost, and he goes out in the wilderness, and the Holy Ghost helps him. The Holy Ghost helped him the same way he's helping us. The same way he came to help us. He is the helper. That's his position. That's his job. That's his assignment. That's his ministry. He came to help. He came to help. And I know the first order of business is him helping us with us. That's the first order of business. Him helping us with us. I'm just going to be real with y'all. I became a Christian at a young age, meaning I said with my mouth that Jesus was Lord. And in my mind, I'm saying Jesus is Lord, meaning Jesus is God's son. Not understanding that it meant he was master. Yeah. Savior, I could understand. He died. He died, and I understood that. Savior, Savior of the world. For God so loved the world, he sent his only son, right? Love. But, but to understand and go further to say he's master, th that had to be revealed to me. 
And through the years, it began to be revealed to me. And it really wasn't until I met forgiveness personified that I understood he's master. Meaning, I came in contact with a love that only God could give. Demonstrated to me. So now that love changes my heart. And then I still wrestle with myself. Remember I said the Holy Spirit's first assignment is really to help us with ourselves. So I continued to read the word. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I pray in the Spirit. Probably not as nearly as much as I do now because I pray in the Spirit all the time now. Then it was, oh yeah, I forgot I hadn't prayed in the Spirit. Anybody been there? Oh, I forgot. I hadn't even thought about God today. I lived a life like that. There was a season in my life years ago. I was like, I don't think I even, I don't even think I thought about him today. Now, I can't not think about him. I can't not walk with him. I can't not have fellowship with him. His very breath is my breath, and I understand that, and I live in that place. I was just telling Havani that we, we all, we, we saw this, I don't know what we saw. We saw a message or a, a post that said Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, Y-H-W-H. That's the Hebrew word for God. It's your very breath. Yahweh. You breathe out. You breathe in. Yahweh. Yahweh. That's the first thing Adam said. The breath of God is put in him and he's Yahweh. So we breathe him. We live in him. But Jesus sends the Holy Ghost. We looked last week at Luke and the story of the two brothers. The two brothers who come to the, the one brother comes to the father and he says, I want my inheritance. No different than some of us. Yeah, come on. Our first beginnings in Christianity, we hear that we could prosper. I want my inheritance. I want my inheritance. I'm your son, and I recognize it now, and everything you have is mine, and everything I have is yours, and so I want my inheritance. I want to live the best life. I want to drive the best car. I want to live in the best house. Now, I'm not condemning if, if you've been in that place, but that's not what it's about. That's not what it was about for the first son, that son who said, I want my inheritance. We saw in that account when he finally comes to himself and realizes, what am I doing eating with the pigs? Why am I suffering this kind of life when I've got a father who has servants that are doing better than me? So he comes back to the father's house thinking he's going to come as a servant. How many of us have signed on to Christianity and said, I'll serve him in any way I can? Not understanding you don't have to serve to get in. Come on. Jesus. You're already a son. Yeah. You don't have to serve to get in. You serve because you love him. Yeah. Man, I go see my when I would go and see my mom when she was still living on the earth, I did whatever I could when I got to her house because I loved her. When I was a kid, I was like, oh, what do I gotta do today? <laughs> what do I gotta do today? It's Saturday. Oh boy. Got a long list. Right? I got a long list, what do I got to do today? But, but as I grew and, and knew and de de uh, developed my appreciation for how much she loved me, it's like, what could I do? Yeah. What could I do? What could I do for her? Well, so the son returns, thinking he's coming back as a servant, and God, the, the father rejoices, yeah. celebrates him celebrates him. And then he says what? You should remember from last week. Bring the best robe. Bring the best robe. Bring the best robe. That's a picture. That's a picture of God. You come into the family of God and he says, bring the best robe. Yeah. It's a picture of me, my first several years serving him. Not understanding that I was his daughter, there was nothing wrong with me, that I was perfect the way he created me, that he gave me his righteousness. I went along trying to earn it for the longest time, struggling with sin. Why do I keep doing what I do? Why do I keep doing what I do? Why do I keep doing what I do? Because I didn't. 
I didn't understand what the best robe was. I didn't understand. The Holy Ghost came to help me with me. The endowment of power helped me with me. This guy in here was not my problem. He was never my problem. Never. You're not hearing it for the first time. I'm publicly declaring he was never my problem. But I can tell you, for years I thought he was. For years you thought I was. In the beginning of the relationship. Well, if he would only. Well, if he would only. Well, if he would, if they would only. He was never my problem. The Holy Ghost came to help me with me. To endue me with power. Endue me with power. That power. Whew. So Jesus has that power when he's led out into the wilderness. He has the Holy Ghost with him. And he faces all those temptations. And he conquers them. Because he's got the Holy Ghost to help him. And then it says when he left, left the wilderness, he came out in power. I see that as another level. Yeah. Because one of the things I know about Jesus is Jesus did not have an unrighteousness conscience. Come on. He knew who his father was. Yeah. Even as a little boy, 12 years old, he knew who his father was. He yeah. said when his parents came looking for him and they found him in the temple, he said, I must be about my father's business. So he knew who his father yes, was. He did. Then it says he left and went with them and was subservient to them, submitted to them. Through, right? From that point on. Submitted to them from that point on. So he knew who he was. He did not have a righteousness problem. Come on. Knowing that. He did not have that. But he did have emotions. Yeah, he did because he was a man. It says he came as a man, right? To live as a man, to show us how to do it. So the Holy Ghost came to help me with me. He came to help you with you. So in the wilderness, Jesus experiences the power of the Holy Ghost because he resisted each and every temptation with the Holy Ghost's help. And after, after that, after he stands in the face of temptation, he knows how to respond to the situation. The Holy Ghost tells him what to say. He faces the enemy. He declares the word. Then it says he came out in power. That's when the demonstration started. Yeah. Yeah. That's when the demonstration started. Yeah. Many times when you, when you look in the Bible and you see miracles or signs, uh, mighty works, if you look that word up, it's dunamis. Dunamis. Time and time again. If it says miracles, it probably is dunamis. If it says mighty works, it probably is dunamis. Dynamite power. So he's in the wilderness. He's endued with the Holy Ghost. He's got the best robe on. He faces the enemy. He's conquered that part for that time, because it says he left him for a season, he was going to come back, but then he goes out in power. Now, it's interesting when you think about the word best robe. Best robe. Both those words have a reference to dignity, value, and worth. And I mentioned that last week, and the Lord said, we're not done. He told me, we're not done. He said, go back to that. Because the reason Jesus could perform the miracles, the reason Jesus could display the dunamis is because he didn't walk up to somebody ready to spit in their eye, as we joked about last week, and have the, who are you to do that? Right. Don't you know what they're going to think of you? Not that he didn't hear that, but it didn't matter a hill of beans. It didn't matter because he knew who he was and he knew who he was 
wearing. Right? The reason we don't see the things we see is because we're not letting them help us with us. We're not letting them help us with us. We want the power. We know we've been endued with power. We want to see signs and wonders at our hands. But have we been perfected? Don't trip on that word. Because Paul said that in Colossians, and we're going to look at it in a minute. But he says that, I, that you would be perfected. Means that you would come to, the, come to the knowledge and the understanding of your integrity and your value and your worth. And as long as you're still wrestling with that, every opportunity the devil has is going to try to kick you in the shins. Who are you? That's what he did to Jesus in the wilderness. Who are you? If you're the son of God, da 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 prove it, prove it, prove it, prove it. We don't have to prove it anymore. That's the point of it. The Holy Ghost helps us with us so that when we're standing in front of someone else that needs help from the Holy Ghost, we're ready to distribute. We're ready to distribute. Half of the times, we probably don't even step out and administer the power because we don't get that far because the... Enemy has stopped us in our tracks. There it is. What if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't work? You're going to look like a fool if it doesn't work. And what if it does? He's helping, isn't he? He's helping us. He's come to help us with us. Help us with us. Come to help us with us. Yes. So in my journey, when I, when I got the revelation uh, that I died, boy, that was life-changing. Everything turned around. Yeah. The Bible tells us we've been crucified with Christ. We've been crucified with Christ. So that means the old man, the old nature, was crucified with Christ. And I really started meditating on that. And then it says, uh, to whom you obey your servants to. So I said, well, if I... If I've been crucified with Christ, that that means the sinful nature has been crucified with Christ, then I don't have any business obeying sin or the, or the whims of sin or the cravings of sin. If, if, if that's the truth, and it is, that I've been crucified with Christ, then the whims of sin, the cravings of sin, the cravings of the old nature can't speak to me. There's no power. They've been stripped of their power. Right? And that's, what, that's one of the things the Holy Ghost did for me is he, he gives us revelation. He gives us understanding. He speaks to our hearts and he emphasizes the things that we need emphasizing when we need it emphasized. Right? Right? So there is no more wrestling with sin. We don't wrestle with sin. It's dead. It's, it's our perspective that, that we need help with and that's what the Holy Ghost does. He helps us with our perspective, showing us who we really are. Yes. Showing us who we really are, victorious in Christ. Victorious in Christ. <clears throat> think, about, think about Peter. <laughs> Peter sees Jesus demonstrate dunamis. Peter saw Jesus demonstrate dunamis and he said get away from me I'm a sinful man that was when he was in the boat and he got the drought of fishes he had asked Peter if he could use the boat and he said cast him over and now here's dunamis right before his eyes miracle power miracle power that changed Peter's life that changed his life in so many ways and his first response is, get away from me, I'm a sinful man. Mm. And what, what, what he said is, I can't be by you. Get away from me. I'm not free from sin. Get away from me. I'm not free from sin. <laughs> Our thinking that I'm sinful is saying I'm not free from sin. 
But the Bible says we are free from sin. Colossians, Ephesians, again and again, it says we are free from sin. That means we're not bound to it anymore. See, if we're believing the lie that we're still bound to it, then we're still being dragged around by it. But when you see you're not, you're not bound to it anymore, you're free from sin, then you don't sin because it can't talk to you. So Peter, <laughs> I'm not free from sin. But then you look at the book of Acts. All through the Gospels, we see Peter kind of wrestling with this, don't we? You really do. You can watch... If you take time and just look at Peter throughout the Gospels, you'll see different things and understand. He still didn't understand he was free from sin. Even in the garden where he had the sword and he's threatened to lose Jesus, what does he do? He resorts to emotion. <laughs> Hacks the guy's ear. And that's right before Jesus is crucified. But then Jesus comes back and he has a one-on-one -on -one with Peter. We all need that one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. The one-on-one -on -one with Jesus so we understand who we are with him and how he sees us and what, he, what he's provided. And then he tells all the disciples, not just the 12, or not just the 11, all the ones that were following him, 500 at least, he tells them, you're going to be endued with power. Meaning the same power you've been functioning, seeing me function with, is the same power that's coming on you. That power, when it comes on you, is to change you. It's to help you with you. So that you can then step out and allow that power to be demonstrated through you. Because then you love them the way he loves you. You have an understanding of the value that's on your life. Because... He gave it to you. One of the definitions for robe is equipment. The best robe. Equipment. And it says, <clears throat> I think this was Thayer's, I didn't write my reference down, but it says, this equipment with power was given that we might have victory over sin in our own lives. Victory over sin in our own lives. This equipment was given to us so we would have victory over sin in our own lives. Because when you recognize that you have victory over sin in your own life because of the Holy Ghost, then you can face any sin you come in contact with, whether it be sickness, what, whatever it is. That's why Jesus said to the woman caught in adultery, who's condemning you? Where are your accusers? I don't condemn you either. And she walked free, empowered not to sin again. Yeah. When you know you're free and have been empowered not to sin, you can give that to someone else. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sickness, you've heard it mentioned many times here, sickness is a demonstration of sin, meaning it's the offspring of what Satan bred in the garden. Come on. That's what sickness is. It's a manifestation of evil. Yeah. It isn't a punishment from God, and yet the world is being taught it's a punishment from God, and because the world is being taught it's a punishment from God, there's a little snaky inroad to our heads about it. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. There's a teaching in the world that sickness is a punishment from God. Yeah. Everybody knows, right, that that's true. There's a teaching. We've all heard it. Yeah. And that little snake still slithers and whispers that it's a punishment from God. Pastor said it in the beginning. You did something. Yeah. You missed it. You open the door, da-da-da, da-da-da. Even yeah. preaching the word, we can say, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And right away we go to, well, see, I did it wrong. I didn't do it enough. Instead of, 
I got all the equipment I need. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and I got the Holy Spirit living on the in I'm going to say that again. I got the Holy Spirit yeah, living man. on the inside of me. The Holy Spirit, the whole spirit. That word holy comes from whole. The whole spirit, yeah. the righteous spirit, yeah. the complete spirit, yes. the set apart spirit. Yeah. And because I have the set apart spirit living on the inside, I'm set apart. Yes. I'm set apart for him so he can use me the way he wants to use me. Glory to God. Not so we can filter it through our mind and think, well, how's that going to work? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like Daniel said, I just say yes. yes. I just say yes. I just say yes. Because who are you saying yes to? You're saying yes to God. You're saying yes to the one that saved you, the one that poured, gave you the best equipment, the yeah. best robe, the integrity and the value that he, that he wanted you to have all along. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this. this. This is Colossians. I told you I'd go there. And I don't even know if I, I... I've listened to the message from last week, and I had this so strong in my heart, and I just... I felt it. I just let it go. So I'm coming back, because God said, go back. So I'm back. Colossians chapter 1. We're going to start with verse 18. I'm going to skip around a little bit, so we'll, we'll jump through. But I really encourage you, spend some time this week reading the book of Colossians, especially chapter 1. And Ephesians goes hand in hand. Pastor mentioned that. It's like the same author wrote the books, and he's saying the same thing in a different way. But he's saying the same thing, and it's a message we need. Colossians chapter 1. I'm going to start with verse 18. This is King James. We'll, un we'll unpack it a little bit, but it says he is the head of the body, the church. And you know who he's referencing, right? Jesus. He is. Colossians chapter 1, King James, he is, should be capitalized he because it's Jesus. Jesus is the head of the body, the church. Okay? He is the head of the body, the church. That's important. That's very important to recognize that and, and focus in on that. He is, Jesus is, the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence, meaning he's number one in all things. He went before in all things. He's the head. He went before. He's number one. That means there's a number two and a number three and a number four. He went before. He's number one. Okay? There's more. There's more to come. When it says he's the beginning and he's number one, that means there's more. <laughs> Colossians 19, or 119, For it pleased the Father, it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. So all the fullness of God dwells in Jesus. Jesus the Christ. You know what the word Christ means. Christ is Messiah, Mashiach. It means the anointed one and his anointing. So you have Jesus, and then he's baptized with the Holy Ghost. He's come to be the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, and his anointing. He's the Messiah, right? And it pleased the Father that in him, in the Messiah, should all fullness dwell, completeness. Nothing missing, right? Fullness. Now I'm skipping to verse 26. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to the saints. That means it's revealed to the saints. The mystery he's talking about. He talks about it in Ephesians. The mystery. Everybody wanted to know what the mystery was. The mystery. And he says it's been revealed to the saints. And in the first verse that we read, it says he's the head of the body. And he's revealed the mystery to the saints. That's us. Yeah. Right? Yep. And verse 27, to whom God, to whom God, the saints, he's 
carrying the thought through. We read them in verses and we don't see that he's carrying the thought through. So to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, among the Gentiles, Gentile means the ones without God, among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. That's the mystery. That's the mystery. Christ in you. You are part of the body that he is head of. And Christ is in you. Verse 28. Whom we preach. Paul's saying we preach this. We preach Christ in you. We preach Christ in you. Yes. Whom we preach. Warning every man. Warning every man. Warning there means to put in mind. To put in mind. We put in your mind every chance we can. Christ is in you. Christ is in you. Christ is in you. Christ is in you. That's what Paul's saying. That's the pastor on our, our, our heart is to, for you to know Christ is in you. Christ, and not just know, but to know. Yeah. To walk it out. Yeah. Walk it out. Christ is in you. Walk it out. Walk it out. Don't just know it. Well, you know I know that. No, 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 no. Don't say that to me. You know I know that. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about take the shot. Yes. Take the shot. Christ in you. So we put it in your mind, teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Perfect. 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 I like that word perfect. Perfect in Christ Jesus. That means integrity, value, honor, maturity, It means growing up and recognizing and demonstrating and living the fullness of Christ, just like he did. Perfect. Perfect. And then Paul says this. We talked about work last week. Whereunto I labor, striving according to the working which works in me mightily. Striving, Paul's saying, I labor, striving according to the working which works in me mightily. He's talking about the dunamis. I'm striving, I'm working, I'm cooperating with the power. I'm letting the Holy Ghost help me with me. I'm allowing the Holy Ghost to help me with me. This is the Weist translation, one of my favorite translations of study. And this is how Paul says it in the Weist. I am controlled by his energy, which operates in me in power. I am controlled by his energy, which operates in me in power. Controlled by his energy, which operates in me in power. And, and part of the, the demonstration of the Holy Ghost in our lives, number one, as I said, is to help us with us, right? And if that wasn't enough, Then Jesus creates the church. He said, I will build my church on the revelation that I'm the Messiah. That's, I'm building my church, my body, on the revelation that I'm the Messiah. And then throughout these letters that we've been reading, Ephesians and Colossians, it talks about the body. Jesus being the head and having the body. And then it talks about the body Working together. Working together. I don't know about you, you guys, but would you be honest in saying you've never been more challenged 
uh, than in the church. Working with people. Working with people. Iron sharpens iron, so to speak. Like, well, I don't know why they didn't show up today. Or I don't know why they didn't call me back. Or I don't know why this happened. Or why did they look at me like this? Or why did this? Or why did that? Or why did this? Right? Come on. Am I the only one? <laughs> no. Of course I'm not. <laughs> Y'all have emotions like I do. Y'all have eyes like I do and ears like I do. And, and so, you know, you're tempted just like I am. I, I said a long time ago, and I, and I don't want to, I'm not in, hmm. I'm going to ask him. He's going to help me better with this one. <laughs> I'm going to give a disclaimer. I've served in other churches before, as you know. Uh, some very large churches, bigger than any you've probably ever been to. And I've served in smaller churches. And I've been part of a church for many, many years when we first got saved and joined the church. So when I say this statement, I'm not talking about this body right here. Okay? But I, I, I talking about emotion here and having to deal, have, have, having to, Holy Ghost, help me with me. Yeah. I've never been so lied to in all my life until I joined the church. Because if I say I'll see you again and I don't, well, you lied to me. Right? I'll call you later and you don't. Well, you lied to me. Okay, I don't need to give those details. But that was something I had to work through yeah. with the Holy Ghost help. Yeah. Well, they said that and they didn't do it. Well, maybe they forgot. But right away, we think they're light. So you, you, I'm just trying to break it down to a place of everyday life where we're like, but Jesus' plan was the church. So that when your brother or sister offended you, you could work through it yeah, with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Not stomp off, have a fit, and quit the church. Yeah, and yet, look around. <laughs> See? He wants us to grow up. He wants us to mature. He wants us to be perfect. Right? And he gave us the Holy Ghost to help us, and he gave us the church to help us. Now I'm going to read a verse, just a couple more verses. This one, wow. So this one, um, I'm going to remind us, remember Colossians says, he is the head of the body, the church. He is the head of the body, the church. So here's a verse in Psalm 133. Psalm 133. Start with verse 1. Psalm 133. This is King James also. Psalm 133. We're talking about being endued with power, letting the power flow. It's called a song of degrees. A song of degrees of David. And this is what it said. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. This is David. David. Writing this, inspired by the Holy Ghost. How good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. The ointment that ran down from his head, the ointment, the anointing, the Holy Ghost, the power, ran down from his head, came down upon his beard. It's still part of his head, right? The anointing, the oil, coming down on his head, on his beard. Then down onto the skirts of his garments. Where's his garments? Where's your garment? On your body. Where's his garments? On his body. We're talking about the best robe. The best robe. The equipment. The best robe. The anointing of oil upon the head of the priest flows down to the skirts of the garment.
our connection to the head is our is is can, is our connection to the body. Our connection to the head is our connection to the body. Our connection to the body is our connection to the head. You can't separate the two. You can't separate the two. The anointing flows down from the head over the beard onto the garments. You can't separate the two. You want more power? You want more power demonstrated? <laughs> Stay connected. Connected. I love that sound. Connected. <laughs> you know that <laughs> Wi Fi connection? Connected. My little thing, my little ear pod, say that to me. Connected. Connected. I love that sound. Look, it's, it's just a fun reminder. Praying in the Holy Ghost is a fun reminder. Connected. Connected, right? That's Connected. Good. That's good. Connected. I just love it. Put them in. Connected. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Connected. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Connected. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Connected. 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 Being in church. Connected. Unless you come in and you don't connect. Because people do that. Yes. There are people that do that. I did that. Uh, my pastors always knew when something was going on with me. I uh, say me, because I'm not going to talk about him. Although, I want to. No. <laughs> somebody asked me a question the other day. Somebody asked me a question the other day. And it was about my connection, I would say, in a way. And my pastors always knew when something was going on because I didn't hang and connect. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, service is over. Mm -hmm. That was a telltale sign. Remember, we talked about tells. Mm -hmm. Tales, tells, tells, tells. It's a sign. Came, heard the word, don't want to connect. Don't look at me, don't talk to me, I'm out of here. <laughs> I have an attitude, it's not with you, but you're one of them, so I'm out of here. <laughs> Come on. This is either helping us or it's not. <laughs> Woo! We, 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 huh? It's not about doing your duty. It's not about doing your duty. It's not about doing your duty, it's about making the connection. <laughs> it's about making the connection. So, part of that, Part of that is because the anointing, the anointing flows down from the head to the body. I mean, I love the picture of the woman who said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, don't think that somebody that comes in for the first time doesn't need a touch from you. They don't need a touch from me. They need a touch from you. Here's another scripture where it says, uh, uh, in Isaiah it says, the government shall be on his shoulders. That's part of the body. Yeah. That's just another reference to emphasize what I'm saying. The body, the anointing on the body, the power. The body's been endued with power. You have garments. You wear the best robes. Let people touch them. Let people pull on your garments. Yeah. The garment of righteousness, the Holy Ghost. There's an impartation. You have in you the Holy Ghost, and he wants to impart himself in others. Usually, if I have opportunity, and I know we joked about this, but if I have opportunity to touch somebody, I'm going to do it. Because I know the power of God. Yeah, that's right. And there's times I can just look at somebody, not even touch them, and I know the power's being transmitted. I've seen it again and again and again and again. You let the power flow. And so I do many times take an opportunity to put my hand on somebody. If I'm talking to them, if I get close enough to them, they don't even have to know what bit them, if I say it that way. 
But the power of God is going into them. Why? Because he starts working. He, it's probably not the first time that the power's been imparted to them, but why not give them a boost? Come on. Why not give them a boost? Put your hands on them. There's a ministry of laying on of hands, not to be diminished. You take the opportunity, you put your hands on somebody, shake somebody's hand, put your hand over the top, hang there a while when you meet them, hold their hand, hold their hand, hold their hand, let the power flow. They may not even know what's going on, but they know something's going on. Transfer the power, impartations, impartations. impartations let it flow take the shot let it flow take the shot allow the Holy Ghost first of all to help you with you pray in the Holy Ghost take the issues to him pause remember last week I mentioned James be slow to speak be slow to speak be slow to act listen to the Holy Ghost Listen to the Holy Ghost. He'll help you. Man, he has kept me out of some predicaments. <laughs> he has. He's kept me out. I'll never forget the one way back when. We're still living in Texas. We hadn't, we hadn't been released even out of, out of the Eustace where we were living. And there was some opportunity perking, percolating. Yes. There was some opportunity percolating for some intense fellowship in our house. Now, I'm not always believing that it's us. I, I, I know that there's times where a spirit flies in, looking, you know. I, I know, I've experienced it, I know it. And we know what to do with it. We didn't always know what to do with it, but we know what, yeah, get the fly swatter. We know what to do with it now, but we didn't always. But sometimes it's subtle and it'll catch you for a minute and like, I'll slap him and then, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wanted to see if you were listening. <laughs> I just want to see if you were listening. But anyways, we had an opportunity. <laughs> an opportunity was percolating for some intense fellowship. And our intense fellowship was movie worthy in the day, right? It was. It was movie worthy. But we don't, you know, we don't show that anymore because we've been redeemed and we don't go there. Now we're recognizing and thwarting. But this opportunity came. Hmm? We were redeemed, but we didn't know. See, that's what I was saying. We didn't know. So we were still falling prey to some junk. But the Holy Ghost said to me, don't say that. He had said something to me, and I had a rebuttal. I know that's hard to believe. <laughs> but something came to my mind that I wanted to say, and it was good. You, do you ever have those where you, come on, she laughs. But right? You're like, boy, if I could just, and it just builds. Right? It's the best rebuttal. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's going to stop him dead in his tracks. He can't even do, 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 do. So I had it all coming. And the Lord said, don't say that. <gasps> he still does that. Would you believe it? He's helping me with me. Don't say that. Don't say that. He's so good. He's so good. Don't say that. He even tells me, don't look at that. He does. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. Turn away. Don't hear that. Don't hear that. Don't hear that. I can be with somebody that I think I want to be friends with. I'll just put it that way. I think I'd like to be friends with them, Lord. And I'm not talking about like a mission, like they're Christian. I'm not, you know, I'm not, what do you call it? Uh, evangelizing. I'm not in the evangelizing mode. I want to be friends with them. I think, oh, I'd like to be friends with them. They're about my age. You know, we got some things in common, da, 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 da. And then I sit down and have a conversation and I want to go, la, 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 la. I don't want to hear that. The Holy Ghost said, don't hear that. That's not true. Don't listen to that. That's not true. Don't listen to that. That's not true. And by the time the conversation is over, I'm like, oh. So guess what? You better rethink your thought about being friends. I'm not saying I won't be friendly, but I'm not going to get intimate. I'm not going to let them pour in my ears the way I've been letting them pour in my ears. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because it's dangerous. Slippery slope. 
Slippery slope. Yep. That's what the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Ghost helps us with us. We've been endued with power to help us with us. Amen. Amen. And so we just do what he says do. Do you have a mint, by the way? We do what he says do. So I'm going to do what he says do. Thank you. Eat a mint? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat a mint. In the meantime, you're going to go over and you're going to put 